The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and my pleasure to be here on this 26th day of March. We're looking at a Dow that this is very interesting because uh, earlier yesterday, it looked like the Dow was really trying its best to find some support. There was a doji candle of the, after that horrible Friday. <clears throat> the Dow yesterday closed. It's kind of like a doji candle, uh, close, close to the open. The open was at 25,490, and the close was at 25,516, within $20. Uh, but what's really important is that to have some kind of move to the upside and then to follow it up through the rest of the day, there are a whole bunch of factors that come into play here. And one of them are the moving averages. One of them uh, is a chart formation, the arch formation that makes a smaller arch formation. Uh, the other is how the MACD is responding, the moving average convergence, divergence, where the stochastic is. Is the on-balance volume rallying? So when I'm looking at this, I'm suggesting to you <clears throat> that there's a pattern here that's unfolding, and it's going to be very difficult for the Dow to change this pattern at this particular stage. Why? <clears throat> that high that was made back on the 25th of February, 26,241, was with very good, look at this, on the left is the daily chart, with very good MACD, the moving average, convergence, divergence. And look at the stochastic, way up in the 90% area. Probably, <clears throat> let me just check, probably 95 Yep, right there, 94, 94.54, a couple of days flat and looking good. And then what happens is two doji candles below, a red candle, a long-legged doji candle, an attempt to rally back to the top. Remember that sudden spike? I can't remember what it was. Some news, one of the Dow stocks exploded to the upside. And then on the 4th of March, it goes to 26,151, 155. 90 points below the previous high of the 25th of February. And it makes a Chapman Wave Roman candle. It has a little inside bar. And the next day, it does that thing that I always talk about in the Chapman Wave Roman candle. If it gets halfway into the wick and in a smaller time frame holds there for a period of time, watch out. There's a real good chance you're going to test the low and probably break it. That's exactly what it did. And it broke down, did another Chapman Wave Roman candle right there on the 7th of March. And then it made that low <clears throat> right at 25252, 25252 on the 11th, I believe, 11th of March. And then it had a really good rebound. And that rebound went from 25,252 to 26,109. Hey, that's a nice percentage move. And then you look down and you say, wait a minute, the MACD hardly responded. It could barely turn up, let alone cross positive. It couldn't do that. The, the stochastic was good, but it never got to 80%. It only got to about 75%. And then the market started turning down. Now the technicals are still very weak. <clears throat> and you've had this pop, this, this I, I don't know if I can call it an emotional pop. It's a technical pop. After hitting yesterday's 25,501 low, right on the trend line, and that says, watch out, in the next three days, if there is a close near the 25,490 level that was the open and close uh, yesterday, there's a real good chance you're going to test this trend line, and very soon you'll break it for a yet another arch formation. But then you look at the weekly chart and you say, wait a minute, the MACD is strong, not as strong as it was at the high of October, the all-time high of 26,951, but it is strong. 
And the stochastic's holding beautifully up in the 87 area. And you've got the nine period moving average being tested, 25,479 successfully so far. 14 period uh, moving average was tested three weeks ago. Now that particular moving average, the black line right here, that's, that is at 25,319. You know exactly what your parameters are. So I wanted to do this just to give you an idea of the daily chart that says probably going to go lower. You're in the lower area of the trading band. Look at the weekly chart, which looks fabulous in every, every single way you can look at it. The monthly chart has improved tremendously, but really it's the price that's holding better than the technicals. So that's one. Now let's just really quickly do this because I've got a webinar coming up Wednesday a week. That's April the 3rd. 5 p.m. for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. Money back guarantee. Uh, just go to the front page of TFNM, but you do have to be a subscriber to be there. And I'm going to be talking about an aspect that many of you know I've covered for a long, long time. And that is the parallels with 1920s and now. And this now period is probably going to be as long as a decade that I've been talking about this. One of the aspects I'm gonna be looking at is Anything Goes. That was the song that Cole Porter wrote back in the early 1930s. And it really talks about just anything goes. Uh, you could use four letter words. Uh, it, just, it just covered everything. So much of what's happening now. Listen to even National Public Radio. There are shows that you listen to the to the to the commentary and you say, "Wow, I mean, it's got nothing to do with being approved. It just has to do with standards that have traditionally been maintained, not for decades, but for hundreds of years. And you listen to the banter and the jokes that they think are funny, and some of them are, some of them are not. But the cussing, the degradation of the English language is really what I'm talking about. I'm, I say, I, there's no morality. I'm not talking about morality. I'm talking about the insensitivity to the fact that young people who you'd like to encourage to use far superior um, vocabulary and, and rather than generic words, to try to find words that describe things much better. And NPR was always the one that was the one that showed the lead and all these things. They shame the lead the other way around now. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know what? This is so much to, to do with an attitude of, I don't care. You can only have this kind of attitude in good times. I know you think maybe it's not such good times. It is good times, believe me. Think, look at those pictures of the 1930s. Look at, the, look, at look how overweight we are. Look how, look how thin people were in the 1930s. Look at, look at people marching across in Selma, across the bridge how thin people were. This is a different age. And the same, um, I, I can't call it obese, it's just kind of an overweight attitude is because things are good. Look how people dressed in the 1930s. They dressed in good, even the, the hobos that used to jump on the trains to catch a ride, used to wear a hat and a jacket and, a, and pants and a suit. Times have changed, and we represent that same period right now. I'll be back straight off this. The Dow's up 164, S&P's up 21. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians, out. rent over. We'll get back to the stocks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So we're looking at the IWM up $1.53 at $151.81. It's up 1.02%. The Dow's up 0.68%. The S&P's up 0.80%. The Q's, if I can see over there, up... Oh, let's see. Uh, up 1.11%. So the IWM... So interesting, huh? The IWM has been in its own trajectory. Lower lows and lower highs. Ever since I made the top in February of uh, this year, at, on the 25th at 159.50, the all-time high is 173.39 in August of last year. Plummets 27% <clears throat> down to the 125 level. Has a really strong rally to the 159 area. And now what we're looking at is, is making lower lows and lower highs. And remember the arch formation, the Dow. It did not take out the left side high. It held that. Trend line, same with the S&P. The weakest, is, weakest link has been the IWM, and that's the way we're going to see money flowing. Uh, very interesting, because if you look at the different sectors, if you look at the different um, indexes, there are hours and days and weeks over the last, since, since um, November, October, let's put it, where each one's been doing different things. You know, you've seen how gold has acted one way and silver's acted another. And then all of a sudden they come in sync, then they go out of sync. So I'm looking at this, and I suggest to you that IWM at 151.77 has a date with a trend line, this uptrend line in the monthly chart of one right there, depends what month, 145s. Of the 145s, and I, I'm only thinking it's in the next three to six weeks. That's number one. And number two is, the 139 level of the orange colored 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, I don't see that yet. But I do see about another three to five points in the charts of the daily and the weekly coming up over the next few weeks. Now, what's really interesting about this whole mix is that I was looking at um, Akamai. Akamai Technologies, and it looked to me like it, I don't know what, what the gap down yesterday, whether it was earnings or whatever, gaps up today, but it looks to me that Akamai is in this area in the tech sector that says, 
I've had my big run. In June, I made my high up in the 84 area. I've, I've plummeted down to the 57s. I'm having this bounce. I need more time. My monthly chart is still very strong at this particular point. I'll be back. I'm not there now, but I'll be back. I'm looking at Adobe. Adobe is in the same category, except it's saying, I haven't, I haven't, I've begun a consolidation. It's not the consolidation. It's at 3.92 at 266. At this particular point, it's in this oh, this rounding top, but it hasn't made a top in the daily. The weekly is still very strong. All-time high, 277.61 in September. It really took a kind of dive going down to the 210, was it? 204.95 level. Let me just type that in. 204.95. I mean, that's a huge hit. And now it's coming back very strongly. And it looks to me like Adobe is saying, I'm in the tech sector that's still doing very well. And in my newsletter today, what did I talk about VMware? VMware is VMW. Where did that go? Oh, I typed it onto the chart. Sorry about that. Let me find that little thing right there. VMware. VMware is trading up 1.69 at 182, just off its 188.51 all-time high of just four, four days ago. And leg E in the weekly chart, and I'm saying to myself when I'm looking at this last night, this is fabulous action. VMware, we actually had this way back when it was an IPO. Very soon afterwards, we had like 200 or more points on the upside and the downside uh, by uh, uh, managing to correctly uh, position our, ourselves in that. Um, and then I've kind of not been there for years. And I keep looking at it and saying, this is one of those that just does cloud virtualization, whatever that means. Amazon, Amazon Link, VMware, VMW is the symbol, 181.75. This is, this is telling us that at this particular moment, tech is not dead. But the technicals and the daily are saying, you know what, it might not be dead. But I think that that's a short-term top. And that there's a good chance the weekly is going to be pulling back. And when I did my homework, I so I say to subscribers, we're going to be going short via different things in different areas. And we need to do it very selectively, which we've started doing. And we have a long position that is going to be kind of a test now of um, oversold levels, trying to just have that, that reflex action to the upside and that's something we're playing. But otherwise, we're raising cash, and we're watching this really closely. And these stocks are saying it's going to be more and more difficult for the market to make new highs in this time frame. I do believe we're going to make lower lows and lower highs. I don't think we're going to kind of crash to the downside. I think we're just going to go. There's a time more than price at this particular moment, but it could become price as well. I, don't, I just don't know. Um, we'll see very soon. So I wanted to go through those. A question in the den about VFF. VFF is, I know I keep doing this and I keep forgetting to type in what it is. Village Farms International uh, trading at 13.96 down, 60 cents. I think I spoke about this the other day I, because I know I did the, the notation. I said it's making a peak E. The MACD is still good. Stochastic is still good. It could bounce a little higher, but I'd be very careful. I'd be taking some profits. I think that's what I said. And now it's made a leg F to $18 and what is that? $18.10 on the 22nd. We're trading now at $13.96. I would say $5 in an $18 stock. Hmm. I'd put that into the category of about a 30% decline. And it's now testing not the nine, but the 14 period moving average, sitting on it, having made a lower low today already. Um, give give it time. I suspect it's going to fill the gap between 12 and uh, 12, 20, 10. What was the gap? 12.22, and what was the high? 12.24, so that's not a gap, but it's, it looks like a gap, but it's that one there. And 11, yeah, I, I suspect this is coming down, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's trading at 12.20 to 11.80 uh, in the next week. Just have patience, it'll be back. Um, next thing that I'm looking at is, um, here we go. 
So that's VFF. Question I had about XAL. Yeah, the XAL, you know, this is this is really tough for the airlines. I mean, just when they think they're getting things right again, they, they had a fantastic run and they think everything's right. We can squeeze sardines into the little sardine can even more and more. All of a sudden, I think they're going to be forced to expand the seating, to make things nicer, to at some point very soon to stop charging for those extra bags and, and, and if you have eyelashes and how many hairs you got in your eyelash, whatever it is. Um, I, I think that they're in trouble. And of course, the Boeing thing just absolutely does not help them one, uh, one, one iota. So no, I, this is not acting very well at all. I think uh, airlines uh, XAL is in trouble. I'll be right back. Got a bunch of questions coming in here. Charles the chapter and Tiger Conditions Hour. Let's look at the E Mini. I think we're pulling back quite sharply. Yes, we are. The E Mini is only up 12 now. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions out. Dow's up 124. S&P's up 17. It feels like they've given back a lot, but um, it's still up quite nicely uh, at this particular point. Now, I'm going to just do this. I want to go through this uh, as, a, as a little exercise. Within the context of what I'm looking at, while I show my subscribers every day, I discuss the different methodologies that I'm using, almost all, not the Chapman Wave 5. It's still under a, a work in progress. Um, it's, it has, has had some really nice, um, accurate uh, notations. And then every once in a while, I just have to change it. 
So if I'm correct about this Chapman Wave 5, there should be a drop, a decline, not a push above the high of the 21st of 26,009, no, yep, 26,009, but instead there should be a pullback under 25,372, yesterday's low to start, um, that would be Chapman Wave 5. The MACD, you can see here the histogram's been improving. Oops, that's the wrong one. The histogram is just, oh, it's the middle of the day, of course. So I can't say it's improving. It's not improving at all. Uh, the histogram is still quite, this is the distance, the measurement between the red line, the green line, the nine period differential, and the slow moving average, the 26 period moving average. So the histogram is still negative. Uh, the on balance volume had a spike with the price this morning. But the stochastic is now down at 48%. That, it was, that's not good. That really is not showing strength. And it failed, the Dow failed to hold above the, both the 9 and the 14 period moving averages over there. That, that's, not, that's not very good. In fact, this green line uh, is about to cross and become a red line. Uh, that's saying that would be a negative. But the day's young is a daily chart, so we can't talk about it as if it's closed. It's just right now at 1232. This is what I find very interesting, is that the spike, the gap up this morning, went above the pink line, that's the line period moving average, and above the green in the Dow 120-minute chart, sharply above. It even went above the 50 period moving average. But this candle for the next 120-minute bar not only has made a lower high, it has gone below the 14 period moving average and is sitting right now, it's sitting right at 25,635, right on the pink nine period exponential moving average. The MACD looked like it was trying to rally. The, the histogram is improving the vertical lines. But if it deflects lower, because by the end of the day, we're only up uh, 60 or we've actually gone down, maybe even minus, that will deflect lower and the stochastic is only at 30%. That's not good. So. Under these conditions, I'm looking at the markets and I'm saying, you deserve a break. You've had a fantastic run from the 26th of December, the lows, and 24th for some, almost all the others are 26th. And the rally that you've had, the IYT, the um, transportation index is failing. It is not giving a confirmation of the Dow, uh, Dow confirmation signal for the Dow's and the Dow industrials and the transports. But I'm looking at this and XLI is the question I always get XLI. Oh, no, no, it's not a dollar XLI, it's XLI, which is the, this is a real industrials, S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund, and that's lagging. Look, this is not having the same uh, bounce. It's making lower lows and lower highs. And now the weekly chart, which has been pretty darn good, holding right now pretty nicely with the MACD good and stochastic, at least at 81%, but it's on, it's testing the, the last of the uh, key support levels, the 14 period moving average, the black line. At 73.40, up 29, it was up. It was up at 73.91 early this morning. Now it's at 73.40. I don't want to see this go because that's not going to be very good. The IYC, which is the... This is where you've got Amazon, it's the iShares, U.S. Consumer Services ETF, Amazon, Comcast, Disney, Home Depot, Netflix, McDonald's, Walmart, Starbucks, Lowe's. Hey, this is key because at 204.69, the high of the 31st of March, everything about it looks like that was a right shoulder extension and failure pattern. And if this pullback over the next two days at 203.28 right now, if it actually starts to go to 202.20 or lower, I'm going to have to call that a peak G and say the daily has made a sell signal to sell mode, but the weekly is still very strong. And that's why I wanted to do this show today to, to, to move around in all these different areas. Look at this. You go to gold, G-O-L-D. This is Barrick. Still holding really nice, just down two cents. It's made a beautiful cup formation. I was showing this yesterday. I can't remember if it was on my show, if it was on Larry's. This is leg C in the weekly chart. And yet, if you look at gold, the contract gold, the GC, continuous contract, this is a different contract or it's a different pattern altogether. And that's what I was saying earlier on, that the patterns that I'm seeing within a sector 
And then even within the sector, you'll find that some of the leaders are now taking a breather and some of the, the languages are holding. And the ones that ha have just started coming on strong in the last week are actually holding well. It's All of this is very important, at least to me, because it's a small gas board. It's the, it's the way you want to be looking at um, the overall market. So here we are. Finally, we've got gold stocks actually holding really well. Yes, ASA, the one I always look at. We don't often actually own, but the one that I, I like to look at because it's the South African golds gives me a good sense of um, uh, what's happening there. Holding very nicely at 10.60, down just a penny. In leg D, underneath the previous high, says be a little careful here, but technically so far this is good. And the weekly chart's improving. And yet if I look at PAAS, PASS, which is Pan American Silver, it's holding nicely, but it's not a great looking chart. If I look at silver itself, look at silver. Oh, down today, down 14 cents. It's just stuck in this range. And that's what I meant. If you look at platinum, was it yesterday? Was it this morning? This morning, I did all these different commodities. I did everything when I did Larry's show. I'll be doing Larry's show again tomorrow because he's having a terrible problem with the access uh, um, of, of the Internet. It's a shame because he was doing a fabulous show yesterday, but it just got too choppy. So I, I said, I, I'm available. I'll do it. So I would look, yes, platinum holding very nicely. It's actually a nicer chart than the silver. It's even a little bit better than gold in a, in a way. So here it is. Married, um, making a cup and maybe a handle formation. The technicals are improving. They're not great, but platinum's holding one at 858.80, up a dollar ten. Now look at this. Wheat, that's wheat, is in leg D, 473 and a quarter, up three and three quarters. Nice action, but a, too quick and too short a, a leg D from the, the trough F that was made in the continuous contract at round number 427. I, I need to put that in. 427, a number of these things made round number lows. 427 low on, uh, that was about the 11th or so of March, and then runs all the way to today's high of 478. 50 points, that's 11, 12, 11% 12 but it's off a low because it was trading back in July of last year up in the uh, 625 area. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying that weekly chart is terrible, but it's improving. Monthly chart is just horrible. This daily chart is a start. So maybe we're getting a rotation into the grains. Soy was down earlier on. It's still down. It's down five and three quarters. It's trying its best to rally. And corn was up a little bit and now it's down a little bit, down too. But it's had a very nice rally from the 361 round number low. I'll be back now. It's down up 110. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying Diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. 
For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, right, folks, we're back and we're looking so the Dow actually is under up 100. It's at 99 right now. It's been up 14, giving back a chunk of the gain. Um, ITB looked fabulous as yesterday. Uh, shouldn't have said fabulous. It had a terrific rally for the third time in two days. I thought to myself, that is going to be interesting because it's done that many times. And then on the third day, it kind of has a red candle. Let's see what happens today. Well, ITB, which is the ISHA's U.S. Home Construction ETF, uh, red candle, had a new recovery high. It's a fabulous percentage move. It goes from 33.27 on the 20th to today's high of 35.31. Uh, <laughs> that's nice, three points, 10% of rally in just days. Hey, wait a minute. Look at the weekly chart. Downtrend line says it needs to decisively cross over this week. It'll be 35.60. It hit 35.31 today. It didn't cross. And it needs to get to a legs D above 36.13. MACD is very strong. Stochastic's good at 80%. It's price that counts. It must not close underneath 34.20 in the next two days because that says, oops, good chance it's going to retest the low of 33.27 made on um, last week. So here it is. Nothing is having a good strength to last under these circumstances. What really is fascinating in terms of the, this rotation I keep talking about is that when you look at an area, did I do that in, uh, I can't remember if I did it this morning. Yeah, if, you, if you're looking at an area that has been very, very weak. Uh, let's just go to HG, which is the, um, here we go. If you look at the co copper continuous contract, and it did make the arch formation, it went to a lower low and then closed above it, which is a very good sign. The low that we're looking at was somewhere around August of 2018 at 2.59. Eventually it breaks under it. It has a rally to 2.90, and then it goes under it at 2.54. Uh, back in the first week of January. And then it has, on a percentage basis, a really good rally. And it goes to this high that was made <clears throat> on the week of the 1st of March to 2.98. And then it starts to fade. Well, now it's sitting right at that 14 period moving average support. If in the next three to five, if by Monday of next week, Monday to Tuesday, copper is trading into this gap, the gap underneath the low of the 19th of Feb, 2.827. It's going to look to me like that's going to be a failure pattern. And that's not going to be good because we want. I want to see, as I show my subscribers uh, over the weekend, every weekend, I show them the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. I say, ooh, copper and... Um, um, and copper and the HGX index, the housing index, and wood, which is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry, are making this rally with weak lower lows and lower highs pattern 
ever since the high in this case was made at 66.92 on the week of the 8th of February after a low of, what was it, 59? No, it wasn't. 55.06 uh, back in December. A really nice percentage. But look where it came from, 83s down to the 54s, 55s. That's not good. And then a bounce and it starts to fail. So that's what I'm putting together. I'm saying the global aspect with the copper, which is global, the iShares Timber and Forestry ETF acting really weak. And I, I, I just don't like what I'm seeing. Now, the fact that crude oil is still holding quite nicely, it's up nine, 98 cents today, almost making that leg D that we've been anticipating in the daily chart. Look, this is a different, look at the pattern, just from the, the October high of 76s down to 42s, doji low, big rally to the 59s, 60 area, 59 area. Look how it's holding nicely. Look at the way it's above the 9 and the 14 period moving average in the weekly. So crude oil is saying crude oil is holding very well. Maybe that's part of why the XAL, besides Boeing and the airlines having to cancel thousands of flights, maybe it's also the crude oil holding well. Now, I would like to see, and I'll talk about this in my webinar the week from tomorrow, what I want to see and why crude oil rallying would be a good sign but I don't want to rally too much, but certainly you could rally to the 61s. That'll be 60 to 61. That's going to be very important. Now, here we go. <clears throat> Within the context of the VIX index, the VIX index earlier was at, who? Um, it was, in fact, at 16.30, and then it pulls all the way back to 14.75. Hey, wait a minute, it's now at 15.59. Let's see what happens this Friday at the close on Friday. If the VIX index, which had that, that sudden big pop with an ugly Friday <clears throat> and closed nicely above the orange line, the 200 period moving average, the pink line, the nine period moving weekly average, and it stopped dead. It did go above, but it stopped dead right on. Let me just open this up so you can see apples to apples. Otherwise, it's my word and you can't see it. Right there, it stopped at the nine period sorry, the 14 period black line moving average. The MACD is starting to flatten out for the first time. Stochastic is just running a little bit at 8.54. If on Friday, this closes anywhere above 16.42, I would say we could have a tough week the first week of um, April. So I'm watching this very closely. If in fact it goes underneath 14.60, and then closes decisively under, what is that line? The orange line is 15.25. Yeah, it closes in the 14s. Uh, that could say, you know what? No big sell-off, but we'll just have this dribs and drabs of sudden pop-ups and then buy, selling comes in. So, I, I, yeah, I, see, I know fund buying comes in. Fund buying comes in at the end of the week. Fund buying comes in uh, at the beginning of next week or the beginning of April. But you know what? We've seen that over the last many months, fund buying sometimes does come in, becomes fund selling. So I'm not saying anything about the fund buying. I just, we don't know until it happens. So that's going to be important. Now, I want you to go through. You remember I used to have an, an index that I called my Dow Quartet. It was IBM, which is actually holding quite nicely here. This is a much better pattern than it's, it's had in a long time. IBM is holding quite nicely at 139.72. It makes the 138 to 137 area key support. If it breaks that, 135, then 200 period moving average is next. If at any point it gets to 143, that's really good action for IBM. Uh, General Electric, which is not part of my quartet anymore because it's out of the Dow. Um, it's had a great run from the 6.66 low. That was made in late, uh, it was December, I believe, <clears throat> all the way to the 11s. Now it's trading at 9.97, holding okay, <clears throat> but I think it's it's going to be a little a little choppy over the, over the coming weeks. Uh, Triple M, <clears throat> great bounce off the low, goes from 259 down to 170, 177, and now it's trading at uh, 206. So this is going to be one to watch. And UTX, United Technologies, this is a really important stock, holding pretty well. 
So as you can see, when I go through these different aspects, and I'm going to go through my cash index, Synthas, um, Amazon, Spy, and Home Depot when we get there. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Don't forget, Steve comes up, Dave comes up, Tom comes up, and I'll be with Tom uh, later this afternoon. So, Sintas, so that was my Dow Quartet. So, it's really the Dow Trio, and they were holding pretty darn well. However, look at Sintas. Sintas Overalls Uniform Rentals this is the one that gives me big clues as to Big, bigger market performances, and it's kind of stalled here, 209.64 on the 4th of March, and then it comes out with earnings. I guess they were not that great. and Maybe the outlook's not so great on the 22nd, 21st, I guess, and 22nd, the gap's down. The low on the 21st is 204, round number. The 208 was the high, uh, and it just gaps down. It goes to 193 in this morning. Yesterday's low was 191.91, uh, and now it's trading at 198. It's a nice bounce, but this is saying to me, you got to be a little careful here because this is a warning. So Amazon is the other one. Uh, that's part of the IYC uh, ETF. So Amazon had a pop-up. It's up 17 now, made a peak D. My thinking is that it is really close to some kind of sideways consolidation. Nothing <clears throat> very negative just yet. SPY is the uh, cash. That's part of it. Whoops, what was that? Uh, SPY is... Did I just do something? How did that get there? All right, here's the SPY trading at 280.64, up 1.59. Uh, this is saying that we probably made some kind of a short-term top just the other day. And I'm not sure if that was me. Did I just disappear? And the next thing we're looking at is uh, we're looking at uh, SPY needs to break into the 283s. 
and right now it's at 280.61 having hit 282.18 and h is home depot which had a fantastic um really bounce off the 179 low all the way to 92 how does it hold but so far this is kind of good this is part of the home the, the home builders and look at the hgx this is the e this is the index itself holding kind of okay so we've got our work cut out for us coming up in the next week because these low interest rates should have seen the home home builders and the i the itb that should all be moving high in the heaven so just be careful out there uh basil chapman about to sign off um and i will see you a little later today otherwise check out my opening call uh it's my daily newsletter very comprehensive um money back guarantee as well as you'll be in ready for my webinar coming up a week from tomorrow night and we're already preparing for that with our positions have a great day I'll be back later otherwise i'll see you tomorrow